Thank you very much, Madam President. Great to see you there this afternoon. Uh, I also stand in strong support of this particular bill, and it addresses a pernicious issue, uh, thankfully not rampant, but so serious that when it actually does occur, it has the potential to ruin individuals' lives. The dissemination of intimate images, especially regarding uh, social media, has been gaining in traction over the years with the advent of more and more technology. And what happens is, let's say there's a young man or young woman, typically the case, have a relationship and then something goes wrong, and that individual, let's say the guy, has intimate images of his former girlfriend. Now, if he had sent those pictures to her, that's not a crime. But if he decides, almost like revenge porn, that he's going to disseminate these embarrassing personal intimate images to more than one individual, let's say, sends it to a couple of his friends or it gets posted on Facebook, think of the devastation that happens to that young woman. We had ample testimony from an individual in the state's attorney's office that handles these cases. They're inherently difficult cases. First of all, just gathering up the information from the social media enterprises, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, just getting that data to start making your case is difficult as it is. But the victims of these crimes find their lives devastated because in this day and age, once this, in, these intimate images are out there in the public, there's no way to reel them back. When asked by myself, do some of these individuals contemplate suicide, the answer was yes. And in fact, if you watch some of the real life criminal shows, there's more than one out there, not necessarily from Connecticut, where young women facing this reality have taken their own lives. Because they feel once their intimate images are out there in the public, their lives are over. They may be ostracized by their peers. They're fearful that their parents and other loved ones will find out about this. It's horrible. So by moving forward with this bill, a good, basic, ratcheting up bill to address a very serious problem, we are adding another tool to the toolbox of the state's attorneys here in the state of Connecticut. First of all, by ratcheting up, we enhance statute of limitations a little bit, but it also allows the state's attorneys to tie in another crime. So now the perpetrator, rather than finding themselves facing one misdemeanor, by the way our laws work, they will be facing two felonies. Now, all of a sudden, there's extraordinarily serious consequences facing that individual. So they don't, don't flout the law. They don't say just blatantly no to the state's attorney and say, go prove your case. Because now, should we pass this and it gets signed into law, they'll be facing some heavy prison time. And now the incentive would be to plead out. And ultimately, while many of us have misgivings regarding the fact that 95 to 90 percent of our cases are pled out, when you have this kind of crime, the last thing a state's attorney wants to do is to have to put the victim on the stand, to have to talk about the pain and the suffering and the embarrassment that has befallen him or her regarding these circumstances. If you can get enough pressure on the perpetrator and you can get the evidence and show it to that man or woman, young or old, and get a plea, it's the best for everyone involved. I can't imagine if this happened to myself, my children, someone I loved, but God forbid this befalls someone that you care about or one of your constituents. It is not unusual to pick up the paper any given day, any given week, and read about a cybercrime. But when it's an intimate image that you felt that would never be revealed to the public, that now is all over 
social media, think about how your life has just changed on a dime. So anything we can do to enhance the ability of the state's attorney to bring justice to these situations, protect the rights and dignity of the victims, and exact a fair plea out of the perpetrators so as to send a message that the state of Connecticut will not countenance this in any way, shape, or form is good public policy. I commend the state's attorney's office for bringing this issue before us. I commend Senator Winfield, Chairman Winfield, for moving this bill forward. I'd like to thank Ranking Member Rosa Rabimbis, my colleague in the House, and Chairman Staffstrom down in the House for working on this legislation. It's a good bill, ought to pass, and I'm very proud to support it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator.